What do most scientists, geneticists, and most of the globalists of the world all have in common? They all want to live forever. But the problem is, they don't believe in our Heavenly Father. So they go about every effort to achieve this for themselves. They want every manner of reward this world can offer them here and now because they know not God's greater rewards for later. These are the people that most in the world put their faith in. In Matthew 7, 13 through 14, we learn a valuable parable about the narrow gate. The narrow gate, which stands for Jesus, is the hard road but leads to salvation, while entering the wide gate, which stands for the world, leads to destruction. Sometimes I wonder if many believers today really have faith in the narrow gate. The past two years have exposed a sad truth about faith. The place inside our hearts which should be filled with hope, belief, and trust in God has been shown to be on shaky ground this past 2020. When I think back how quickly my friends, family, church leaders, and community were so easily given over to fear and accepting of lies, I'm hurt to my core just thinking about it. These are the same people I respected, took trusted advice from. The same people who throughout my life have always said, have belief and trust in Almighty God. It seems that lasted right up until they felt they needed to believe and trust in the world. And through that first year, I asked myself, who are these people? And how will God get the glory in a time of testing when we turn to the world for solutions? And why did faith come with a limit? One pastor friend of mine kept telling me he needed to take the Kool-Aid to protect his family. Why? Are we not covered in the blood of Jesus? Will God's promises for our welfare suddenly be limited now? In Jeremiah 29 11, it reads, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end i received that do you or is this area exempt from faith because the world says otherwise and when i say this understand this was a situation where satan's kingdom told us we needed to do something or we may die otherwise yes let's be clear this world is ruled by the enemy until the lord returns and ask yourself, what are the plans God has for you? So whose word are we making decisions from? God's or the world's? And if we trust the world, where was the faith in God? Let's talk about trust. One of the definitions reads simply, one in which confidence is placed. The Strong's lexicon says to trust in, to have confidence, to be bold to be secure, to feel safe. In the Bible, in Psalm 44, it reads, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, 
nor such as turn aside to lies. So let's ask, has anyone still not opened their eyes to the lies this past two years? Does pride prevent you from repenting from the deceptions? In Proverbs 29, 25, it reads, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth trust in the Lord shall be safe. Ask yourself, has fear not been a great motivator this past two years for many? And should not the promises of our Lord be our greatest and only motivation in troubled times? Let's talk about faith. One of the definitions for faith reads simply, complete trust. I like to say, faith is belief in things not seen. The Strong's lexicon says faith is faith, belief, trust, confidence, fidelity, faithfulness. In the Bible, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, I'm guilty as well. We all lack a little faith where we need it from time to time. But I'm trying to just remind everyone that without faith, we can't please the Lord. So let me shift gears to another topic before I get ready to close out this short lesson. Let me ask you something. Everyone listening, where does God say to store up our treasures? Because this past two years, these same people who I've been talking about are the first to teach us about worrying about our future, making investments, having to acquire wealth, and how to be comfortable in life. And I'm not saying don't do any of this. But ask yourself, did Jesus worry about any of these things? Maybe this shows the difference between our faith and his. Next question. If we were told to be separate from the world, stay apart from it, and come out of it, then why do people say they believe in all the promises of salvation, yet cling so dearly to the world in the face of Satan's threats of death this past two years. If we say no to the world's lies and stay true and faithful to God's word and lose our life, does Jesus not explain to us this is gain? Or do some not have real belief in the promise of eternity with our Father? Are your hopes, dreams, trust, and faith firmly planted in the world where we're called to be apart from? Have you let deceptions like the Seven Mountain Mandate draw you deeper into the world God called us to come out of? In Philippians 1.21 it reads, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Our job right now is to proclaim the gospel of Christ and to stand faithfully to his word and truth until death. And in death we find gain as we join our heavenly father in eternity. When I look around to all those who profess and claim Christ as savior, I often wonder if they truly believe all this. Let's flash back for a moment about one year ago when I just began my channel. And in just a couple of minutes, let me give you an explanation of what I believe is the meaning of life. If you have a pen and a piece of paper, turn the paper long ways and draw a one foot line and let's begin. Ever ask yourself what's life all about? Or what's the meaning of life? Let's talk about the birds and the bees, but not in the way the world talks about them. Take a moment and think about waking up in the morning. What's the first thing you hear? I hear the birds. They're chirping, they're going about their business. They're doing exactly what God intended them to do. In Isaiah 43, seven, it reads, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. 
I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Ever notice the bees? One flower to the next, pollinating just as God intended. Grab a paper and a pen. Draw a line for me about one foot long line. I'm gonna entitle this the meaning of life. On that one foot line, mark off the first inch of that line. And then think back real quick to your earliest memory as a child. My earliest memory was, I don't know, four or five. My grandmother had a purple popsicle she gave me. Uh, think to that earliest memory and then picture where you are now. That memory of that time gone by, it seems like the snap of a finger to me. It seems like yesterday. And if you go forward 20, 30 years from now, you'll probably remember the, the moments that are happening right now. And you'll say to yourself then, wow, that went by so fast. So think about that spot you marked off on the one foot line, that one inch. Think of that as your lifespan right now. From the beginning of that line to the end of that line, that one inch. And all the rest of that line, that represents eternity. I understand not everybody believes like me, but for the millions out there, especially that are believers in Christ, that understand God's kingdom, you gotta understand that all of the things of this world are of no importance to what God has in store for us. And the meaning of life to me is wanting to share that salvation, that gift from Christ to everyone else in the world. So let me wrap this up with my final words. We all have to be reminded of what is most important in life sometimes. And who among us does not need to increase in our faith? I'll be the first to admit I do. But if you're a believer in Christ Jesus and you find more comfort in the things of this world over his promises, then you just may need this reminder. Everything we could ever hope for will be found in heaven, not here. Friends, if we're not set free by truth, then we're living in bondage to the lie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Your encouragement is greatly appreciated. God bless.